Okay, case eight is a 15-year-old male with a lesion of the distal femoral epiphysis. So the end of the long bone right underneath the cartilage, and we're actually seeing cartilage here, which, which may represent part of their growth plate. It's hard to tell because at low power, you can see we've got a curetted specimen, a curettage fragments, multiple fragments of mature cartilage here, which I'm going to tell you does not represent part of the lesion. This is background cartilage. I imagine that they scraped out the lesion and that it was right near the, the edge of the growth plate, and that's where this cartilage came from. And then in between, we've got these fragments of, of lesional tissue, abnormal tissue. It's not bone and not regular cartilage. And they're just kind of a diffuse sheet of uniform mononuclear cells. They don't have much atypia. They all kind of look the same. And if you go closer and look at their cytology, let's see if I can get into focus here. You can see that some of them have nuclear grooves, these kind of elongated lines here down the, the length of the nucleus. And some of them have a kind of vaguely bean-shaped or reniform, kidney-shaped nucleus. So these kind of grooves and bean-shaped, coffee bean-shaped, some people like to say, cells. That, of course, is the buzzword for the tumor that we're looking at here, which if you're at home, you're hopefully shouting out the answer right now. And then also some scattered giant cells commonly seen in this tumor and in many other bone tumors for that matter. But the thing you're all waiting to see is this, right? The ultimate buzzword, the chicken wire calcifications. So, and also if you shout it out Langerhans cell histiocytosis because of the bean-shaped nuclei, that's not a bad idea. The nuclei of this tumor, which is chondroblastoma, can look uh, similar to Langerhans cell, but in Langerhans cell you'll have eosinophils and mixture of the background inflammatory cells, um, and then the uh, usually radiographically going to be a bit different. So these tumors here, this is chondroblastoma, which is a benign tumor of cartilage, and here the, what happens is the chondroblasts don't develop into well-formed mature cartilage, like the cartilage we saw over here, the mature background normal cartilage, like from the growth plate here, you can see the chondroid cells are arranged into these kind of rows, right? These columns, these tall columns, which is typical of what happens at the growth plate. So that's their background normal cartilage for comparison. But this tumor doesn't usually make much normal cartilage. Sometimes it has some pink kind of chondroid areas. Sometimes it can begin to get a little bit chondroid here. And in these areas, it makes this purple lace-like or chicken wire pattern calcification, which you can see and they, oftentimes the areas like this, the cells are kind of degenerated or, or even dying. And that's when they get wrapped around with this purple um, chicken wire calcification. So that's a very good example. Now I have seen chondroblastomas that did not have good chicken wire calcification. So if it otherwise fits well for this, that's okay, I think. But um, I've, I've seen some that I thought otherwise fit well for chondroblastoma, but didn't have uh, this. But this is the characteristic feature that if you're, if you're lucky, you'll get to see. And then radiographically, the, the patients are going to usually be skeletally immature. Not always. This can occur in adulthood, but usually it's in teenagers to young, young 20s. Oftentimes the patients are skeletally immature, and the lesion will be a well-demarcated lytic lesion in the epiphysis, often on, on the end of a long bone, and they'll have a nice sclerotic rim around it, a sharply demarcated rim, to, you know, which kind of indicates slow benign growth. Now that's all very loose um, interpretation of radiology from me, a non-radiologist. So uh, if you're a radiologist watching this and I misspoke, uh, please forgive me and correct me in the comment section. Because obviously radiology is much, much more nuanced than I begin to understand, even as a bone and soft tissue pathologist. But that's a really nice um, uh, chicken wire calcification. And then again, you're going to have sheets of these bean-shaped or coffee bean grooved nuclei in the background, often scattered giant cells like here. And that can actually lead people sometimes to mistake these and think it's a giant cell tumor because there's multinucleated giant cells and mononuclear cells in between. And that could resemble a little bit giant cell tumor of bone. So giant cell tumor of bone tends to occur more in adulthood in skeletally mature patients, whereas chondroblastomas are usually in skeletally immature patients. And that in giant cell tumor of bone, you usually want to, you're going to want to find areas that have diffuse sheets of large, uh, osteoclastic giant cells, usually with many nuclei present. Now, when you get a fragmented or partial sample, it can be more challenging, and um, the, uh, that is something to take into account. But when they're a kid, I'm, I'm pretty reluctant to make a diagnosis of giant cell tumor of bone. Um, in any case, I always try to think of all these other things first.
I don't know if I've ever seen a giant saltimer bone in a child, but I, I'm sure it's happened, but I don't think that I've ever seen one personally. So you can spend some time exploring this slide uh, once I have the digital slide up, um, and I'll have the link down below, of course, and you can check it out for yourself. But this is a very nice example of chondroblastoma. And let's see if there's any other areas here to talk about. Here's another one of those kind of areas where the cells become degenerated. You can see they're kind of like smudgy and breaking down, and then that's when they become calcified, and, and you get this uh, chicken wire calcification. Oh yes, this case doesn't really have it, but uh, these tumors often develop secondary aneurysmal bone cyst areas, so they can get areas that look like ABC. So if you see an ABC from a child, look around and make sure there's no areas with sheets of chondroblasts. That would indicate that maybe it's a secondary ABC arising in a chondroblastoma. So let's see, one of the questions here we have is, um, is uh, what are the other bone tumors that are usually epiphyseal in the epiphysis? So um, I just said a giant cell tumor often is a lytic lesion in the epiphysis of a long bone, but it tends to be in adults. In kids, we have osteoblastomas as seen here. Aneurysmal bone cysts, so they can occur in a variety of locations. They can occur in the epiphysis of long bones. And then finally, a very rare entity, but one that tends to be in the epiphysis also, is clear cell chondrosarcoma. And I've got a video about that. Um, I'll put a link down below, and you can go check that out. A very distinct appearing tumor. It's extremely rare, but it's an important tumor to know about because it can mimic some other things. It doesn't look like a typical chondro, uh, a chondrosarcoma, and it also has a different uh, prognostic implications. It tends to, in general, have better uh, prognosis than some of the other forms of high-grade chondrosarcoma. So here's another look at those uh, coffee bean-shaped nuclei in this very classic example of chondroblastoma, a benign tumor. And the majority of these are treated successfully surgically. I believe they often will curette them out. Um, and occasionally, though, they can recur, but they are benign.